Okay, so I'm here in front of this amazing Queensland brush box. And one of the questions I get asked is, when you're reforesting acres of land, how do you manage to do it for nothing? Well, when I'm out and about, I'm always on the lookout for trees, especially those that are in seed. So one of the aspects of the Queensland brush box, you'll see here the leaves are green and glossy and they actually look like a, um, a rainforest tree. But what distinguishes the brush box is it has gum nuts. So it's actually a distant relative of the eucalypt and it is a koala habitat tree, although not a koala food tree. So the reason I want to harvest a heap of this seed today is this has been one of my standout pioneers in, um, in the food forest as well as our long-term timber forest. And it is a fantastic timber as well. So what I'm going to do today is there's a couple of methods. I usually keep a uh, uh, paper bags with me in the car and then what I'll do is sometimes you can collect the seed in the leaf litter on the ground but there's not much here today so what I'll do is I'll grab some of these gum nuts from the tree now you'll see these gum nuts here they're still uh, intact so you want to check as well that you're not collecting empty seed pods with no seed so what i do is once i've collected them i actually keep them in a, a paper bag to dry out and then you'll get uh, basically really fine uh, almost like dust the seed pods The other beauty of the Queensland brush box is it will tolerate really heavy clay soils. It will tolerate frost, they're fast growing. And the other thing is they're drought tolerant as well. So they can tolerate wet summers with our subtropical humid climate here in Northern New South Wales, but they'll also tolerate um, more temperate climates and Mediterranean climates as well. So I'll keep harvesting these and then we'll go back to the property and I'll show you just how fast the growth rate is as well as how to get these established in your own nursery. So I'm back home now in Kyogle and next to me I have a young brush box. So this young brush box has been in the ground I'd say just about two years and I'm standing level with it and you can see it's already towering over me which is absolutely fantastic. So that's why I wanted to get more of these in on the landscape because as I said they'll tolerate really steep rocky slopes um, but also they'll tolerate uh, down in the creek flats where we've got really heavy clay and where a lot of things just won't survive because there's also heavy frost. So really great to have this adaptable tree. So we'll go into the nursery now and I'll show you how easy it is to propagate them. So now I'm here in the nursery and ideally what you want to do with your seeds that you've collected, if they're not quite dry, leave them in a really hot spot like in a hot car in the paper bag, let them dry open and then the seeds will pop open and leave that fine dust of seed in the bottom of the bag. But for the purposes of uh, just a demonstration, some of them were a little bit dry and had let the seed uh, go to the bottom of the bag. So we'll see what we've got. So what you want to do is, first of all, I just use uh, containers that I'm going to throw out in the recycling bin. You can see how it's reasonably deep to allow some sort of root growth. I just punch some holes in the bottom of this. And with any of the eucalypt species or brush box, you don't really need that much compost. It's mainly a mix of um, river sand, maybe just a little bit of compost for some nutrients. And then what I do is, you can see here, I've just patted that down. And then what we're going to do, it's a little bit breezy, so you have to be careful that the seeds don't fly away in the breeze. That's what they're designed to do. So what I'll do is, let's just see what we've got here. So yeah, some of these are still quite green, haven't opened yet. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to just sift through so that I can just show you what's left at the bottom of the bag and hopefully there's something there to show you. Okay, so I'm just gonna tip what's left into this container. Yes, and we do have some seed there at the bottom. So just hoping it doesn't blow away in this breeze. Okay, so if I just give this a tap and I'll try to get them to the bottom. 
They are so fine. I don't know if this will actually show up on the camera or not. Okay, so they are so small, but anyway, we'll see. So in amongst that, you'll see there are these tiny little flecks of light brown, and they are literally like particles of dust, and that is the brush box seed. So as I said, it's more obvious when you've got a lot of them, you'll be able to see. But if I get, take out, I'm just trying to see, like several of them could fit on the tip of my finger. That's how small they are. So what you want to do is, as I said, leave them in the paper bag, let them really dry out in the sun. Um, and then when they split open, you'll be able to get that fresh seed. Then what you want to do is after you've just tapped this down, just to make sure, sure there's no air pockets, because the seeds are so fine, you don't want to bury them deeply. I'll just scatter them on the surface. And often if I collect the seed with the leaf mulch, I'll scatter those across the top as well. So I just get those tiny fine seeds, kind of like sprinkling salt <laughs> on a dish. And then I just do this, just super light covering. Okay, then what I'll do is just give them a good water in and I just keep them under shade cloth. So above me in the shade house is just 50% shade cloth. So there's still some light getting through and I just keep an eye on these so that they're, um, they're kept moist but not super wet. And then I just put them aside. So here I've got an example of what they look like when they sprout. Now just bear in mind this lot here I collected, oh sorry one thing I forgot to mention, always make sure you put in a label so that you know what they are and if for some reason you've got this container that hasn't sprouted anything uh, in several months time you know perhaps it's time to get rid of it and start again. So always pop a label, I just put brush box, I'll put the uh, supermarket shopping centre and casino where, so I know if I want more seed where to get them from and then the date and then again you know if for some reason you've got nothing in 12 months well perhaps the seed wasn't any good. So this is a good example because sometimes it's really hard when you've got really fine seed and lots of seedlings coming up. Um, sometimes it's hard to distinguish what are weeds and what are your brush box. So here you can see the baby brush box which are these little ones here. So you'll get to recognize the patterning of the leaf and if you look next to it here you've got a weed and uh, over here unfortunately I'd planted some amaranth in the veggie patch so the seeds have blown in so that's what the purple ones are but you can see a little brush box here. So usually when they're big enough to handle like this I will prick them out just with a little uh, butter knife. I also just use my hand so I can feel the roots and I'm not at risk of uh, ripping off the delicate roots. So for example this one I'll just gently burrow underneath and just gently just trying to there's a couple of really small baby ones there so I'll just kind of gently pop those back in. Okay so there's an example of a brush box seedling that's ready to be potted up into a pot this size. So basically I'll use the river sand mix with compost, pop it up into, pot it up into the tube stock like this. And um, once they get to about this size, so this, these here you can see they're um, probably from seed, almost 12 months old. You can see there's roots coming out the bottom here. So these are ready to go in the ground. So that's a good example of how to get thousands of trees for free. Um, I'm constantly having a look in, uh, in the streets around car parks, uh, just regular street trees and seeing what's around. Um, so that's the brush box, really fast growing, tolerant of frost, heavy clay, uh, droughts, really fast growing and they love being pruned. So an amazing uh, tree to create mulch in your forest systems.